Good morning. Welcome to St. James's this morning. Um, it's always one of those, I always seem to get given these services when, I'm sure Steve's done it deliberately, it's the end of the holidays. And, you know, I'm a little bit, oh, oh it's the time to go back. And I know most of you are sat there thinking, you don't know you've lived. I know Mike is. Holidays, what are they? Um, it's all right, you haven't got long to retirement, Mike, it's fine. Uh, so I, do, I just want us to pray for a moment. Let's get our heads in the right place before we sing our children's song. And that also gives a chance for a few more children to arrive as well. Um, so I'm not do, we're, Lou is not doing the actions with me to no children. Um, so let's just pray. Let's get our hearts and our minds and our heads in the right place as we come to worship this morning. Dear Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you as we come out of this such a special time as we think of, of what you did for us on that cross. But more than that, Lord, we, we celebrate your resurrection. We celebrate you coming back and giving us your helper, your Holy Spirit, in that time of Pentecost, Lord. We celebrate the fact that we can come and we can lay everything at your feet this morning. We celebrate the fact that you are a great big God. You can overcome everything that we think is non-overcomable. You can overcome those trials, those tribulations that, that we just think can't be sorted. And Lord, we bring those things to the foot of your cross. We know that 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 curtain in that temple, which was not an insignificant thing, was torn in two when you died on that cross, which means we can come directly together into your presence without having to bring physical sacrifices. But Lord, we bring the sacrifice of ourselves this morning into your presence as we come to worship you. Amen. So, um, Lou's going to come and help me, thank goodness, um, because we are going to sing, Our God is a Great Big God. Now, our God is a Great Big God, is that right? Yeah, good. I saw, heard voices at the back. I thought, no, we haven't got that one. Um, oh, good. Uh, so, our God is a Great Big God. Uh, Lou apparently knows this really, really well, um, but... We're both a little bit nervous, so we need you all to help us um, with the song, because I haven't done this one for a while, and I'm rubbish at action, so I'll be about three seconds behind, and Lou will be ahead. Okay, are you ready? Everybody on your feet, please, including the children. Our video will magically appear on the screen.
Hello, yeah. Thank you, Lou, for that. I told her about that about three minutes before we started. Uh, she's a very versatile person. Um, but um, we're going to have a moment as well now where the children are going to help me a moment. Now, it could be a few adults might need to help as well on this side. Um, so, first thing I want us, you to tell me, children, if possible, adults if not, is what do you think I have in here? So, what do we think is in here? Any ideas? Yes. A ball. Yeah. Oh, now that's a good shout because I am actually a PE teacher. Now I do carry things around like this with lots of balls in, but on this occasion, no, it's not. Anybody else? What do we think is in this bag? A book. A book. <laughs> now I'm a PE teacher. I do not carry bags around with books in like that, so it's definitely not a book. Any other ideas? Adults can help now, if you like. A rhinoceros. <laughs> Thank you, Ian, for that. A tent. That's getting a bit closer. A bit closer. Pun? A survival kit. Good idea as well. No, it's none of those things, believe it or not. So, what was that? It's a boat. Well done, Sharon. She can't even see it. <laughs> In here, I have a boat. Now, I'm, I've got my boat here. I'm going to go out and I'm going to pop it on the river. And we're going to have a little nice, nice little time. Do you think it's going to go well? So there we go. We're ready to go. Everybody happy? I'm going to sit. I'm on the river. No? What do you think? What's going to happen? It's going to sink because it's not got any air in. Now, you're absolutely right, aren't you? So, what have I got to do to the boat to make it so that I can actually go down the river? What do you think? Would you like to pump it up for me? No, okay. Would anybody else like... It was, a, it was worth a try. Anybody else like to pump it up for me? Got a pump. It's nice and easy. Oh, we won't do the whole thing because we could be here till the end of the service. But I've got a. Yeah, go on then. Come on, he's he's good, good man. Well done. Everybody, give him a round of applause. So what we do? That goes in there, and off you go. Put your feet on there and go. Oh, is it not working? Give it a go. Try now. Ah. Hang on, hang on. There's something wrong. <laughs> Take that thing off. Try again. Give it a go now. See if that works. Put your feet on there. There we go. And what's happening? Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'll give you a hand in a minute. Oh, I know what's going on. We're making it even worse, aren't we? We've got it on deflate. Try again now. Try again. I should have prepared this better, shouldn't I? Oh, there we go. Look at that. So what's happening? It's filling with air. So keep going, keep going. You're doing a great job. Great job. If Look at that. It's brilliant. Fortunately, this one does fill up quite quickly. Well done. Thank you. So we will, a bit like um, Blue Peter, but we're not going to have the one. There's one I did earlier. We know, we sort of get the idea that this is going to start filling up with air, and it's going to start taking shape. Now, this is a little bit like us. When we perhaps arrived at church this morning, we came and we were perhaps a little bit out of shape. We were all a bit crumpled, and we were stuffed in a shape that the world has made us. Now, that boat was stuffed into that sort of shape so that it can go in a bag. But we get changed, our shape gets changed. And God has designed all of us to be a, for a purpose. Every one of us has a purpose. And this, the purpose of this boat is to be pumped up and to be ridden down a river. 
But unfortunately, it gets out of shape, and things don't work out, and it gets pushed into different shapes where it's not actually going to be that useful. And that's a little bit like us with God. God has created us for a purpose. And what do you think it is, I'm going to ask you this time, what do you think it is that fills us, that gives us the right shape? Any idea? God, that is correct. Is there any part of God you think that would fill us up to give us the right shape, to be the right? Adults, you can help if you like. The Holy Spirit. So God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill us and to create the right shape in our lives. And when I spend time getting pumped up by God, listening to him, reading his word, spending time praying and worshipping, what happens is I start to get into the right shape and God is able to use me for what I've been created for. And it's a little bit like that boat. If that, if that boat's full of air, it can be used for what it's supposed to be for. If we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we can be used for what God intended. So my prayer for all of you young people going out to your class in a moment is that you are filled with the Holy Spirit so that when the world bashes you out of shape and think you're doing things that perhaps you think, oh, I probably shouldn't do this, the Holy Spirit is able to help you and keep you in the right shape. So let's pray for our young people before they leave us this morning. Dear Lord, I just thank you that you don't just set us off and let us go, but you actually shape us. You fill us with your Holy Spirit and you make us into what you would have us be through your Holy Spirit and through your help. I just pray for all of our young people and all of their leaders now that they will hear something more of you that will give them that shape that they need to be in to go back to school tomorrow or to be with their friends or whatever it is they're doing. And we just pray that you'll bless their leaders as they try and communicate a little bit of you with them. Amen. Okay, so young people, if you would like to leave us for your classes, that would be great. For the older ones, a little bit of a chance here. And it, this may not, uh, may be that there's nothing uh, that um, anybody would like to share. With us, but I'll start us off um, and then... Because I think what, what's happening at the moment, we're spending a lot of time praying for each other, which I think is absolutely amazing, absolutely fantastic. And our ministry time at the end of the service and our prayer meetings and all of those things, they're really, really good. But we don't always get a chance to hear what God is doing um, with those prayers. So I just want to spend a moment this morning before we go into a time of worship so we can respond to that. Um, with some words of testimony, brief words if possible, um, of people who perhaps have had answers to prayer and things that, are, that God has done in their lives um, in the last few weeks or even a bit longer. So I just want to share one thing with you from myself first to kick us off, and that is Steve challenged us um, a couple of months ago now, probably uh, as um, as a leadership team and as different people in different roles, to, and I think it was probably more through the ministry team as well, thinking about um, allowing God to have words, pictures, visions, and being confident enough to share those things with folks. And being a very selfish person, um, God, God gave me a picture, but it was for me. So, I, and there's been others as well, honest, but th this particular one was for me. And it was a picture of um, a tree growing up. Um, a fir tree, you know, those sort, the sort of Douglas fir type, really, really tall. And it was there, true and straight, um, looking good. But in order for that tree to be used for the purpose, a little bit like we looked at for the canoe just there, in order for that tree to be used for its purpose, it needs to be chopped down. It needs to be severed and for it to be repurposed and reused in a different way. And I've been thinking and praying about work and, and my future. And it's been a real, a really helpful picture as, as I've been thinking about what to do next in my life. And so I have actually given up my, so I've decided to take a few chops at that tree. I'm not saying my tree's fallen yet, but I'm taking a few chops so God can reuse me in a different way. Um, so I've resigned my role as head of department at school. 
And um, so I'm changing what I'm doing so I've got a bit more time and space to allow God to shape me into what I think he would like me to do next in life. So I just wanted to share that because I think sometimes we don't hear those things from people. But if anybody else has got any testimonies they would like to share, the floor is open for a while. And then we'll go into time of worship. Andy. Some of you know that on the morning or during the night of um, Monday, Thursday into Good Friday, um, I have I, I have a machine that I need, desperately need, to enable me to breathe during the night when you all relax and things start to collapse in your throat and things like that. Well, my sleep apnea machine gave up the ghost after 11 years of continuous use. Liz put a message on the prayer app um, and... Despite many phone calls that I made on the Friday morning through the NHS to try and get a repair, there was nobody on a bank holiday weekend, so it looked as if I was going to have to go five nights without any sleep. And believe me, it is five nights with no sleep. Somebody read that prayer app, um, and well, I, I know a lot of you read that prayer app, and I'm extremely grateful to you for your prayers. But... One of the congregation here um, likes tinkering with things and um, six-inch nails and silver foil and anything to make things work. And that person came to our house and fiddled, I think that's the only way to put it, but secured a system using a 12-volt car battery that enabled the machine to work. Um, and... I really did feel that it was God's prayers being answered that put this person in touch through the prayer app and enabled them to give me a repair that the NHS couldn't provide, the hospital couldn't provide, but Dave Chapel could. Anybody else at all? I would challenge you as well to um, talk to Sean or Duncan when you next see them, because they had a really cool, um, <laughs> Sean had a really uh, interesting picture for Duncan, for one of the friends that he's praying for, which sounded completely bonkers um, and completely, and Sean said, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to tell you this. And then Duncan went to see this friend who's not a Christian, and he knew exactly what it meant. And sometimes God does those things, you know, that you... You think, what? This is complete nonsense. What does this, What is this talking about? And then, um, when when Duncan shared that with the person who's got no faith at all, he said, "Oh yeah, that means this." And it was just an incredible little story. Duncan was very upset with Sean for sharing it because he had to go and confront. That. But do ask him about that because it's a, it's a quite a cool and quite funny story as well of what God can do. Anybody else before we move on? Yes, Dick. Um, as you know, I'm part of the ministry team. But um, the, well, the idea, the comment that I want to make is that God is an amazing God, um, and we don't use him. He wants to be used. Um, there was that classic example last week. Um, a couple of people were um, going to be talking on you know, the, the, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday um, evening, um, uh, uh, and um, they, I happened to be sitting next to them. They just said, we both feel very nervous. So immediately I said, let me pray for you. So just a quick prayer. They felt immensely better. They felt the Lord had answered that. Now, we don't use that. We don't think about it. I know between us we don't think about it. You know, when one of us is feeling um, maybe not as well as they ought to be or something like that, the, the prayer is there. Now, prayer, God answers prayer. We just don't use it. We must think about the answer. Thank you, Dick. And, yeah, that, that reminder that, that God is always there. We've got a relationship with him to spend time and to actually ask him 
four things, and we've got the parables to, to sort of back that up. Anybody else before I move on who's thinking I really should, but I'm not going? Okay. So we're going to respond to that now um, in our worship and really try and open up our hearts to, to God. As Dick was saying, you know, God is there for us to really to, to talk to, to, to appeal to, to thank, all of those things. But let's, let's, use, yeah, let's use that relationship we have. Let's use the Holy Spirit as we come into worship um, with him now. Okay. Praise 
Death is defeated. The King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a Praise the hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise.
we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only Everything you promise, faithfulness is true. We're desperate for your presence. All we need is you. Here for you with our. With our hands lifted high in praise, and it's you.
with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing Lord, we just lift up our hearts to you as we praise and worship this morning. We pray that we will be waiting for you to talk, to change, to mold, to fill as you see fit, Lord. We pray that we will be shaped into the person that you want us to be through the words that are said this morning, through the message you give us this morning. We pray that you'll prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls for that word today. Amen. We're going to have our readings, um, which I think Andy and Liz are doing. And then Rob's going to come and, and talk to us. The first reading this morning is taken from Acts, chapter 4, starting at verse 32. The believers share their possessions. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify. I think we're just getting the folds up to see on that one. I can't hear anything with my hearing aids. <laughs> Start again. The believers share their possessions. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from John chapter 20 starting at 19. Jesus appears to his apostles, sorry, to his disciples. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. 
how Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where those nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the word of the Lord. did my first park run for a while uh, yesterday and I'm feeling the, uh, feeling the effects. So I, I can stand here because I've got something to hold on to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you, Lord, for what you have to say to us today. Lord, help me to be a clear channel of your words to us and open all our hearts that we might see you afresh, acknowledge you as our Lord, and open our lives to be formed into your image. Amen. Amen. We know the story of Thomas so well, don't we? And those words put your finger of Jesus, put your finger, see my hands, reach out and put it into my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. He was transformed. And we are here to meet that same risen Lord, to have our faith renewed and like all the disciples and the early church that we read about in our first reading, to be empowered afresh by the Holy Spirit. We are here to be a transformed community. As individuals and together, showing in deed and word the new creation that was initiated when Christ defeated death. We are praying about and thinking about how to reorder our building. Yet that reordering, however it happens, is only going to be effective or useful if we too are reordered, if we too are transformed by as individuals and a community to show the presence of the risen Christ. We need to have our faith renewed day by day. We live, as I think we're all aware, in an increasingly divided nation. People seem to enjoy insulting each other and I'm not going to quote some of the things that MPs have said about others, but I, I think it's, I don't remember a time when people felt the need to put others down or to say things that were offensive. And yet, we here are the antithesis of this. 
we have the answer that our nation needs. I was just amazed this morning, just caught it on the news, that um, Richard Dawkins, it is Richard Dawkins, isn't it, that rather well-known uh, atheist, is saying that he's worried that, the, the, that England is losing its Christian faith. <laughs> but I think actually... He's seeing something. He's seeing what happens when, the, when, to quote a poet from the last century or two, when the tide goes out. I went to an exhibition at the Tate Modern on the work of Yoko Ono, not somebody I'm particularly fond of, you know. But, I mean, it was interesting to watch it. And, and to, but to realise how horrendously they got it wrong. You know, all we are saying, if that I, I, and I apologise to you younger ones because you won't know, you won't have heard of the Beatles and John Lennon, all we are saying is give peace a chance. It was a sort of the anthem of the 60s, wasn't it? While the Vietnam War was going on, let's remember that. And I mean, 40, 50 years on, what difference has that made? The people that, you know, raised their hands and took marijuana, uh, or, and, you know, they're not, they weren't changed. In fact, they became the people who, until recently, have sort of run the world. Well, they didn't give peace a chance, did they? We're, we're, I, I think the Archbishop of Canterbury reminded us in his sermon, there are about 50 places, 50 countries in which war is happening. So, we have this tremendous joy and responsibility because we know the source of peace. We know the source of reconciliation that can bring people together, that can give people a picture of God's will for the world. We're a very diverse group here this morning. Young and old, relatively rich and relatively poor, single, married, with children, etc., etc., and yet together, we're a family. Together, we're one in Jesus. And, so, and that's how we show the risen Lord to those around us. You know, we, 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 we talk about God is love. And of course, it's what, it's what binds the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together. But in that, I don't, and I should have actually had a picture here, but I'm not. It, there's a lovely uh, icon called the icon, Rubens icon of the Trinity. And it's, we've got like a, a table, and at one end sits a character who, you know, who represents the Father. Opposite him, there is, oh, at the next, around the next bit is the Son, opposite him is the Holy Spirit. And, but there's a, another, a fourth side, and the way it's painted, it's drawing us in. God wants us to be sharing that Trinitarian love that, that holds the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together and holds us as part of it. So when we come to worship, we actually have a, a better picture, dare I say it, than Thomas. Thomas only saw Jesus, and he was the first disciple to make the jump. Good Jew, you know, thou shalt, you know, we don't have any images of God. Yet he says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And actually, we have that fill of, full of you that it's the Trinity that we're worshipping. It's the Trinity that's drawing us into that love. And I, I was, today is the 30th anniversary of the Rwanda genocide and Jane and myself and our three oldest children lived and worked in Rwanda for a while before the genocide. And I have one picture that I've never lost because the, you know, if you like, genocides don't just bubble up. They're, they're there. They've been, you know, it wasn't the first time that the two Rwandan tribes have been in each other's throats and I won't go into the history of it. But it was bubbling under even when we were there. And it was a divisive it was a divisive thing in the church, divisive line in the church. One of the people that I admired most and who uh, helped me most was a, well, I wouldn't say he was, he was a sax archdeacon, let's get it honest, because he was of the wrong tribe. 
and the, uh, and the bishop didn't, you know, wanted to get rid of that tribe in the church because even the church was tainted by it. And he was a lovely, lovely man of God. His wife had, had mental illness because of the way he'd been treated. But he took me and we went round to visit, as I was doing young people's work, to, to various parishes. And rather like the Church of England, sorry, yeah, the, the, the clergy are good, were good and bad and in between. Uh, and unfortunately, where, where we were living, it was, it was very much towards the bad end, but never mind. But he took me to this parish, and, th and this guy was quite tall, I mean, certainly taller than me. And he went to this parish, and he said, there's a lovely man here. And it was the, 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 the vicar there was a, a member of the, the, the Hutu tribe, the majority tribe, but very short. And these two men embraced each other as brothers. I think at the time I was aware they were doing something quite risky. It's one thing saying you're friendly, but actually to, be, to show that unity because these men were both men filled with the Spirit. Now, I am sure that 30 years ago, they were the first ones to be killed. Not just because of their tribalism, but because they have a fill with God's love that broke down those barriers. And that is what we are and who we are called to be. People who are open to the Spirit to transform us. I'm reading a book called, at the moment called The Renovation of the Heart. It was written 20 years ago by a, a saint called Dallas Willard. But it's a challenging book because he, he's writing out of the American context and uh, a man who deeply loved God but who doesn't really was obviously quite critical of the uh, American church in a nice way. Because he says the trouble is, you know, that what they're being sold is, come to Christ, give your heart to Jesus, and then carry on as normal because you've got a place in heaven. And he says, no, come to Jesus and then allow him to transform your life. So that, that's what we're supposed to be, people who are being changed from one degree of glory into another, who are being equipped to fight against the principality and powers and the spiritual wickedness of our generation. The sort of things that just singing Give Peace a Chance doesn't touch and cannot touch. And that the sort of spirit that brought the Jerusalem church together. And we, don't, we, we sometimes forget just how diverse they were. You had the Jews from Jerusalem, the sort of rather snotty-nosed ones, uh, and you had the Jews who were, who were in the diaspora, the, the people from all over the world, Jews all over the world, who were into business and were rather, as regards the Jerusalem Jews who were pure, they are a bit off, off the mark. That's why, of course, they didn't like Jesus because he came from Galilee and if you, you know, know your Bible, Galilee of the Gentiles. You know, that's the biggest put down you go to a Galilean. And yet this group of people who have been met Jesus, who'd seen the risen Lord, many of them, who'd been filled with his spirit, were transformed. And you've got, got this community of care. See how these Christians love one another was actually the sort of, they just couldn't understand it. And on the day of Pentecost, 5,000 people responded to Peter's, or maybe 3,000, I can't remember which one it was, responded to Peter. Now, a lot of those people had come in because it's a major feast. There were people who come from all over the world, and it says that. Now, no doubt, some of them had to go home. So they went home with that new faith in their hearts, and they became the core of the churches that Paul and Barnabas and others founded around. But you know, God's an incredible God. You know, we, we often look at, you know, we look at the Old Testament and think, you know, and the destruction of Jerusalem and all that, and we think, what a failure. No, it was a success because the Jews were kicked out of their country and they went and founded little communities all over the, all, all over the world, the, the, their known world, where, of course, the church was planted. And you've got people like Daniel, and I think this is a challenge to us, 
because he sometimes didn't get it, get it wrong. Daniel was a, 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 a really outstanding priestly Jew, and suddenly he found himself working, working for the, the emperor Nebuchadnezzar, who destroyed their city. And I, I'm reading the book of Daniel and reading that history is really important for us because it shows how you live for God in a totally pagan environment. Daniel knew what was important and what wasn't. And the trouble is, I'm afraid, I find often Christians are fighting the unimportant battles rather than the battles that God wants. Because what Daniel did is he earned the respect, and she, like Meshach and Abednego, he earned the respect of the emperor, who was a pagan. And because of the way, of the way they lived, and they were faithful to the Lord in diet and the things that were important, because of the way they lived, he got that respect. And if you read you know, the book, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was challenged and came to faith in inverted commas. But it was a challenge because they also ended up, all three of them did, in a fairly fiery furnace, and Daniel, who escaped that, got thrown to the lions. But of course, we know that God looks after them. But they, they knew where to fight their battles. And I think for us, in our community, in our country, we have to have that really holy wisdom. We have to be filled with the Spirit. And we have to have integrity. And that's why I find this book so challenging. Because it talks about, and I'm very briefly, he, he, he talks about we're living as Christians in, in that in, you know, in, in heaven, we're surrounded by the infinity of God. He's there. And, and the bit that touches and links us with heaven I mean, is our souls. And he says, but what God wants to do is to transform, start transforming that, our souls, and then our relationships with people round about us. So that what they see in us is the spirit of Christ, is the life of Christ. And then that, that touches our minds and bodies and, and then our spirits. And we are being transformed. Not in a, you know, my, my latest grandson, he's six months old, and he was born, praise the Lord. But he's got a long way to go before he's, you know, an adult. And it's the same for us as Christians. And the challenge for us is to be the, what the Jerusalem church was in Jerusalem, to be that in our community here. And so, let's you really use the opportunities we have. One of the things, the good things that happened in, well, some of the, one, one of the good things that happened in Lent was, of course, we had our five-week small groups. And I just pray that that will continue in some way. Because that's how, going back to the random revival, that was the center of that church. That, you know, the real random church, not the one that uh, you know, was seen. Every week, the Christians got together. And they shared together. And they shared the things that had gone well. They shared their problems. And they, but above all, they praised and worshipped God. That's on a, that was on a Friday night. And then, of course, they came to church on a Sunday. And I just leave that with us. You know, it, 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 if that's not something you've been involved with, well, think about it. Because I, I do believe it's in small groups that churches are transformed. The, the, the church that Jenny and I joined when we came back to England uh, was, was, a, 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 was a new church. It was on the sort of just beginning to form. But we, 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 we did a course called Expressing His Life. And, and that was the root of the church. I think most people in the church went through that course. It was quite a long course, but we did it together. And we grew. I mean, that church is, has its problems, all churches have, but is, now has its own building and two services on a Sunday. But I, I've just realised you know, that, that, that was the, where the seed was sown. So as we look at these, these, two, these two passages, you know, let's go back. It starts with worship, my Lord and my God. But then it 
that faith is built in community and in sharing. Uh, and we are being called, I think, to be a reordered church, a renewed church, as together we explore and grow and become the people that the Holy Spirit and the Son and the Father are calling us to be. Amen. So let's just um, respond to that uh, briefly before we enter into another time of worship. Um, Rob obviously talked about a lot of places in the world that are suffering and that need those God's people in the center of those places changing things and transforming things through the Holy Spirit. So let's just bow our heads and let's just bring some of those places to, to God this morning as we pray. Dear Lord, just thank you for that message. Rob, um, and the reminder, it starts with you and me, that each of us um, is, is the instrument that, that will be used to transform and change lives around us. And we just pray for, for your people in, in the places where, where there is war. We pray for your people in the places where there is conflict. We pray for all those who are trying to to change what's around them through your Holy Spirit. And we pray that there will be changes through the power of your Holy Spirit and the power of prayer in those places. We pray for the leaders and we pray for transform, transformation of their hearts and minds as well. And we pray that you will change what is happening. Lord, we saw all those people coming together in, in the Bible there from different places and hearing your word and being filled with your spirit and transforming and going away and transforming the places they were in. And we pray for the same for, the, for your people in these places. Lord, we have that grain of mustard seed that we need to grow. We don't know the answers to the many of these problems. We feel that we can't change anything. And it will just continue. But Lord, we know that you also tell us that we can claim your promises. And that you can transform and change lives and change leaders and change politicians. And Lord, we, we again bring it back to us and we pray that you will help us to be the people who do make those changes and make those differences wherever we are. Whatever we are doing. And that we will continue to lift up and pray for those who are in those places. We will continue to spend time petitioning you and asking you, and pleading with you to act in those places so that things can change. We pray that we will see supernatural things happening and changes taking place, starting with us. Amen.
this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Our Father, all of heaven knows your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Sound of heaven touching earth, spirit break up, break our walls down, spirit break up, heaven come down. Could I ask the ministry teams to come out, please? Um, and if you feel that you'd like to come out for prayer, for, for anything at all, please do come and get prayer with the ministry teams. Uh, they'll come out to the front. We'll continue singing as well. Break our walls down. King Jesus. King Jesus. You're the name we're lifting high, your glory, shaking up the earth and sky, revival, we want to see our kingdom here, we want to see our kingdom to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. Break up. Break our walls down. Spirit, break up. Lord, we just pray that you will break those walls down, whatever it is that's in, a, in the way of coming into your presence, whatever it is in the way of us coming and, and asking you 
for what we need. We just pray that you'll break those walls down, that our, our hearts will be filled, that we'll be transformed, renewed, that you'll mold us and fill us. Please do come out and get uh, prayer if you want. As Dick said, take advantage. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's, let's use that while it's there. Let's ask God for what we need. Please come and join us on a Wednesday as well after, um, in the evening to pray there too. Let's keep praying. Let's keep worshipping as we leave this place. <laughs>